So I want to bring Stanley into the conversation. Um, how did this project come about? Um, well, uh, actually, um, Antoine and I were in a, com in, in, in a different conversation altogether. And um, he mentioned to me that he was you know, doing the documentary and that he was having some concerns with the person that he was thinking about uh, directing it, so he didn't have a director. So I said, well, why don't you let me direct it? And he said, well, okay. And it was really uh, uh, that, that simple, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, we had discussions about the subject matter, um, something that, that I certainly was not as, as knowledgeable as uh, Antoine was, but, but certainly aware of the fact that, that there are those that suffer depression in our community. And um, sort of it told him how I would want to, to uh, show that in the film. And, and uh, he said that it jived you know, very much with the way that he would want to see the film. And so what I did was I, I said, well, let me write a script. And uh, I sat down and wrote the script and then uh, turned the script over to him. And he said, yes, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So uh, let's proceed. And it, it, was, it was a very simple uh, process. Uh, as far as our, our collaboration is concerned, and um, um, I mean, we work very, very well together. Uh, we, you know, we had our ups and downs, which were mostly okay. fun things. You know, fun things. <laughs> but anyone who knows uh, Antoine's personality, you, you know that uh, there will always be ups and downs, but fun ups and downs. But, uh, but it That's was not true. <laughs> it was a, it was a it was a wonderful working experience, um, uh, being able to get all the fine actors that we were able to get, including Lester, to, um, to come in and, and give up their time to, you know, to help us tell the story. And the, the, the process of listening to the hours and hours and hours of tape interviews and uh, just getting so emotional about all that I was hearing and listening to these, these tapes and then you know, the daunting um, uh, challenge of taking these, these interviews and, and editing, editing them down and finding those pieces that I could, could you know, create these, these puzzle pieces and then put them together in a, in a partial puzzle and then shoot the reenactments and also uh, fit those in. It, 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 was, it, was, it was quite a puzzle. But um, the, the thing was just listening to it over and over again, listening to the interviews and and really getting to know the interview individuals, uh, it, it made the job you know, very, very easy. And, and, and the other thing, too, was that we were blessed with an incredible editor by the name of Robert Kupka, who uh, just was a genius. And, and uh, did, I mean, Robert and I sat together for hours and hours, day in and day out, uh, putting little pieces of the, of the film together uh, very painstakingly. And um, this was the result. And the editing is just so beautiful. And one of the things that was moving to me was watching Rob Smith. Uh, Rob Smith is the guy that you see at the beginning of the movie. And he, he actually was on the reality show, I Want to Work for Diddy. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, really? he was on that, was on that show. So um, just the cast itself was a group of very talented and very gifted actors. Um, so just from, from my seat, I can tell that there was a lot of love and a lot of thought put into the editing process. Yes. And it really is that the central part of it is that, that scripted narrative. So how did you, for, for Stanley Antoine, how did you go about selecting the individuals that would tell their story to be uh, featured in the project? Antoine. I died. Um, and it's interesting when Stanley was talking about the, uh, the directing aspect of this, the, the, the reenactment part about it, that I was recalling just now what it was like for me doing those interviews. Um, several of the guys here who we saw in the interviews, the cameras over my shoulder, they're sitting right in front of me, and I am crying, and they're trying not to cry. 
because many of them I knew. And some of them, even though I knew them for a long time, I never quite knew the depth of their story. And when they started to tell their story, there was so much of their story in my story mm. that it was difficult for me to keep on track while wiping my eyes and, and, and my nose. It was difficult to keep on track. But what, was, what I think is, is more important here is that, let me just back up a little bit, is that this documentary was supposed to have followed a book. And so I did a whole lot of interviews, more than 40 interviews, with black gay men from across the world, America, the Caribbean, and Africa. But I can't find a publisher. So I decided, let's go with a documentary. And let's see if I can get some of those same guys who told their stories, to see if they would be willing to sit in front of a camera. And some of them said yes. And I asked each one of them, why do you want to do this? And all said to me, I want to be able to do this to tell my story so that one more black gay man or another person like me does not have to live in pain and suffer to know that he is not alone. Each person said the same thing and that became a common theme in all of their stories. Why are you doing it? Because I want if I want someone else to know that they're not alone in this, that they can get through it, that they can survive, they can grow out of it. Um, when Stanley decided to do the reenactments and cast the people, the actors for this, what was impressive is that the cast of characters that did the reenactments were willing and able without question, to come and do their part. They didn't ask for anything. They didn't expect anything. They knew what they were doing. They were happy to do it. And that was one of the most amazing things of all, is that they just threw themselves into this and just simply went with it. It's amazing. Um and it's significant because the title of the movie is You Are Not Alone. Um, so to be strong enough to tell your story on camera, even though that you know that, um, that this is going to be seen by various people in the African American community where there's still a stigma about depression and seeking uh, professional help, that I think that is courageous in, a, in of itself.